Welcome to my first ever tutorial. We are four seconds in from the video. I'm going to show you my process in painting this pomegranate. It's, it's from a painting that I'm doing with other fruits and wheat and barley and the title of the first artwork where it's from is Fruits and Harvest. Now, I am showing you my painting process for this pomegranate and I'm using Photoshop and my process here is I'm actually trying to figure out how I'm going to paint it so I didn't I don't have anything established when I did this painting and in this tutorial I hope to be able to show you what I did and also as documentation for my process um, as you can see I am I am adding some shadows and I did the, first of all, I did the flat colors first with the leaves and the, where the white part is, I separated the layers of the red, the green, and the whites and also separated the colors for the background, which is the circle that you see behind the pomegranates. Here I'm already putting some shadows on everything uh, even those kernels I just call it kernels I'm not sure what you call them but these are the little fruits of the pomegranate Here, uh, I just, I was adding some shadows, I believe it's on, I created a new layer called shadows, and it's shadows on the object, so these aren't cast shadows, but more like ambient occlusion of these, the objects that I'm painting. painting 
thing about pomegranate, I was really inspired by the reference that I got, which looked like a renaissance um, lighting. I think it's called chiaroscuro, where it's very dark and it's popularly used for still life paintings and also used these days for photography. I mean, also used for photography. It's an effect that was inspired by Renaissance paintings. So here I'm just fleshing out, um, fixing the shape of it. And now you see that I added highlights on the pomegranate. And I separated my layers with shadows and lights on top of clips on the color layer. So now, because I'm reviewing my my painting while doing this, I've already figured out what I could do. And I mean, I'm already reviewing what I did. This is a uh, recorded on post. So what I eventually ended up doing is create a flat layer of the of the collar. And basically I have one layer for all of the objects like the pomegranate and the the fruit or the the kernel and then also the leaves. So I have it in one layer, as you can see here on its named collar. And I just flattened them, but I retained a separate layer for the shadows, which you're, you're going to see later on the later part of the video. And at this point, um, I, I'm still finding my way through it, so... I put some... Here you can see I added a layer called Selector. Actually, a, a folder. I added a folder named Selector. And... What I'm gonna do is... Create a mask for per object. So this is inspired by because I work in 3D, and this is something that I see in 3D where you could assign an object ID, and basically for rendering or for post, it allows you to see each object in the 3D scene in different colors. So it's easier. To separate each object so that was inspired from that and I did this to make things easier for me because I was still figuring out what how I'm gonna organize my painting here and I wanted to maximize the the, the special brush from Photoshop I think it's Kyle's brushes it's what you call it and to maximize that I worked with a flat, with one layer, so the mixing is easier, and also that's what my computer can handle. Um, it would be hard, even though I think Photoshop can handle the separate layers, meaning the mixing would still work with separate layers, but I think it would work best with one layer. I'm talking about the Kyle brushes. And also it's gonna slow down my computer if I have too many layers. So this is what I came up with. I'm gonna, I painted each object in different colors. And I also cut what gets cut from the scene. So I didn't include them like the, the thing behind so it's easier to select them. that I that I used for naming my
my layers, it's a good habit to name your layers. So the way that I color coded each object is basically choosing a layer, a color that will help separate. Like it's easier, fastest to read. Meaning I'm not gonna use different layer. Uh, sorry, a similar color side by side. So you see the way that it separates. That pink is not gonna work with the red, um, red colored layer. So I'm going to change that to something else to separate them, you'll see later. Or not, <laughs> I guess I didn't change that. I grouped them all, but I, as you saw, I made separate layers for each and just hid them. But for faster, to work faster on it, I group them, all the leaves together. Later on, I'm gonna also edit some of them because I didn't cut those parts that get cut or blocked by other objects. Just like how those green kernels, green colored, layer for each kernel would be blocking the blue blue colored pomegranate layer behind it should be cut I colored the layer so that it's as part of organizing Photoshop. So it's only meant for selecting, so I hit them all. And now I'm gonna, I started painting the shadows. This is the cast shadow that falls on the surface. A while ago I did the ambient uh, or like the shadow coming from the juxtaposition of each object. This one that I'm doing now is a cast shadow outside the object. I created a new layer called cast shadow on objects. So all the shadows that I'm painting on this layer will be painted on the objects. When I say objects, all those pomegranates, uh, the kernels, and the leaves. I'm just blocking it very fast, very quickly. So I used a soft edge brush to erase and the hard one for painting the shadows. But it's on multiply. The blending mode of that layer is on multiply. And I didn't think too much of the color. It's just something darker and here, uh, it was violet, which was thick and it was okay. I didn't think, I didn't plan on what color to use. So here you can see that I'm reorganizing my layers and I created reference at the bottom at first I didn't know what to do with the line art um, I wasn't sure if I I'm gonna retain it or not 
but I went back to my other references that I have for this style and since I made I'm working on a bigger file on a bigger um, higher resolution file focus on the pomegranate I decided that I'm gonna get rid of the the outline the thick black outline that you can see and I was bothered by the white thing on the top 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 left of the canvas Okay, I got rid of it finally. Just making sure everything's clean outside. Okay, so at this point I knew what I was gonna do. I made my selectors and I'm gonna work on one layer for the colors. I'm going to talk about the layers. Uh, so I have selectors grouped and I just use it to select the separate objects and um, they're cropped according to what you see on the flat surface. Okay, here I'm back. So it's like a soft light for all of the, for the pomegranate. Here I started painting the edges of the, the leaves. And I decided that I'm not going to keep the thick black outline. So I'm painting over them now. creating this I want to give a clear distinction of where the object for me for my use I want I want to know where it ends and so that selector is to help me know where I should be it helps me know where the object ends where the edges are, rather. Here I was still uh, getting a feel of the brushes, mixer brushes. Um, so I just went ahead and figured them out and tried different stuff and Eventually, I got the hang of it, and I really like it. I like that I went with this style of painting, and 
I like having that dry thing and from then there on I started getting I found my go-to for sketching so when painting this when you're painting you're gonna find yourself you have to draw things out because you're clarifying you're working on the details now so you're going back and forth with the drawing part even though you're in the process of painting you're still drawing because you're you're adding details on the painting so you're going back and forth with the drawing and then coloring I'm using a stylus and it's something I recommend. You should definitely get one if you don't have. Here you'll see I'm painting out the the outline. And at this point I'm still getting the feel of the brushes. working as I wanted it to and eventually I used the layer light which I set up before it's an overlay and so I used a separate layer instead you can see the here you'll see the outline of the the lasso, it's selecting that, I used the selector here, but you see that there's excess, meaning you'll see later that I'm going to paint over the pomegranate because I didn't fix the selector, but I'm going to erase that later on. So, these things should be cut in the selector to make things uh, faster. So I fix those selectors. And then paint it over it again. So that's another tip. If you're going to use selectors, have them cut already. I created a new layer reshape. I called it reshape where um, I plan to to just paint on top of everything if there are changes in the shape because I already made the what do you call this the selectors which which shows me the shape but if I want to change the shape I thought that it's faster if I just make a new layer and then post edit the shape of the selector. The selector isn't that important, but it's important because it will it shows me the clearly what the shapes of the object are. But for the um, I said it, it's not that important at the beginning because. Um, I can't overthink it during the process. I wanted something fast, so I ended up creating a new layer that I named Reshape and I colored the layer into red because I plan to edit the shapes much later if I still want to keep editing it because I might still leave it. Um, I, it's possible, but I, I'm just going to leave it as is. It's still too early on the process to, to get slowed down by perfecting the selectors. So, it's really 
be a balance of the traditional and just the this software like Photoshop, these digital tools are just tools, meaning I'm just maximizing the benefit that you could get with a, with Photoshop for example, not to let it impede from my work process. So, um, that's really the good thing about working on digital files is that digital painting is you can make as many layers and then just merge them. And it's very versatile and you get to appreciate it if you are painting also in tradition. How it helped me is traditional painting helped me Think because I would get overwhelmed with the digital tools, even though I am in the generation that grew up with all this like Photoshop and all this digital software for painting, for sculpting. But the way that I hijacked my um, system because I would get overwhelmed is from doing traditional art. So, if you're like me, um, you kind of need to hijack your system. And when I say hijack your system, is you're thinking around, around this. Like, if you see yourself slowing down in your production, or you, you're not being very productive, you're not creating as much, as much art as you should, I recommend doing something like for me that's what traditional painting and drawing did for me here you, you'll see me using that reshape layer that I created so I'm also picking colors from the canvas it's because I'm changing the shapes of what I drew before and that's exactly the purpose of the layer, that's why I created it. And when I'm final with the shape of the object, like in this case, the kernels, if I'm final with the shape of that, then I would use this layer as a reference to fix up the selectors if there is still a need for it, if I need to continue editing. So basically, editing, updating the selectors, and the use of that is for faster painting, faster selecting, if I still need to work on it. At this point, I'm looking at the reference a lot for the kernels because the tough thing about this is that I have chosen a different a different lighting position like the source of light on my painting is much different than than my reference and so I had to look so look a lot like I have to While painting this, I'm looking at my reference and I'm glancing a lot of the, so many times. And the read there is really, really fast, meaning always looking on both the reference and my painting. And there are two things that I'm trying to solve here. The, I'm solving what shape I'm gonna, what shape of the kernel is, and the layout, the design in my composition, and choosing how these kernels are positioned, which I'm, which reference I'm gonna use for one kernel, and so I'm designing the composition at this time. Basically, I know where each kernel will fall in the on the painting. But 
at the same time, I'm looking at my reference. Okay, this is what I have in the reference. I'm gonna use that for this kernel here on my painting. And um, you'll see later there are those that I change. And I change my mind later on, on two of the kernels or one of the kernels. And again, I'm still figuring out, I was really curious, and this is the detail part, and I'm pretty much familiar of the shape of each kernel of the pomegranate, but I'm still curious that I want to get a pomegranate and really study it up close. And because the very interesting part here, I'm painting the lighting and how, how does a kernel react to the lighting. It's very interesting. So, my reference is quite limited, meaning my light source is much different from the reference that I'm using. So, that's the challenge that I have. I think in this part of the painting, I ended up just, I just followed the reference, the lighting of the reference, and then I decided, okay, instead of solving two problems at a time, I'm just going to use, solve one problem by copying the reference exactly, including the lighting. That will help me understand the shape better. And then later on, after I've done all, I figured out, okay, this is gonna be the shape of the kernel. And then I'm gonna worry about the lighting later on to fix the lighting, the highlights. Here I tried to fix because I have a navigator window a smaller window that shows me an overview and so I fixed this part but this should be on the color layer not the reshape layer which you'll see me fixing it now I created a new reshape layer on top of everything because I changed my mind on this kernel here that I'm working on. Um, I think this part 
part, the one, I'm repainting it because I just guess, I guess the shape and the lighting for that, but it, I didn't like it, so I just changed it to something else. This time I'm more true, like I'm staying truer to the reference on how it looks like. As I mentioned, I simplified it for myself and just copied the reference kernel as is and the plan is to worry about the lighting, fixing the lighting later on. Alright, that's it. It's a work in progress and I'm gonna, at least I have process and so far I'm happy with that and I'm glad to be able to share it and feel free to use the same thing. If you have any questions just drop in the comments and I'm gonna continue painting on this. I plan to, it's a work in progress but I'm gonna move on to the other stuff. It's a set that I'm painting so um, stay tuned if you want to see progress on this.